you lower your cholesterol with medication or supplements. Now you want to keep your cholesterol at healthy levels without medication. This is the topic of this video and I will share with you science-based solutions like always. Blood cholesterol levels are influenced by genetics but mainly by diet and lifestyle. Pointing the finger at genetics is very easy as it cannot be complained about and removes the responsibility of each one to follow a healthier life and normalize the idea that taking medication is normal. Cholesterol is extremely influenced by food. So, in this video I will explain which foods you should watch out but also other factors that could be making your cholesterol goes up before you pointing the finger at genetics. Saturated fats are abundant in animal-based foods like beef, pork, poultry, full-fat dairy products and eggs. Saturated fats can cause problems with your cholesterol levels which can increase the risk of heart disease. Trans fats are so unhealthy that the US Food and Drug Administration has prohibited food manufacturers from adding the major source of artificial trans fats to food and beverages. Trans fats can be found in a variety of food products including commercial baked goods such as cakes, cookies and pies, shortening fats, microwave popcorn, frozen pizza, refrigerated biscuits and rolls, fried foods including french fries, donuts, fried chicken and also in non-dairy coffee cream and stick margarine. If you want to know more about it, check the website of Mayo Clinic. Partially hydrogenated fat are laboratory alterated fat and partial hydrogenation creates trans fats. They are basically the same thing. Check all your cookies and cake levels to see if they have partially hydrogenated oils of any source. Replacing foods that are high in saturated fats, trans fats and hydrogenated oils by healthy options is a giant leap to decrease the risk of heart disease and stroke. Heat more or cook with more olive oil, wrap seed or canola oils. Use avocados non-salted or toasted seeds and nuts because they are high in polysaturated fats which decrease cholesterol. Eat more fish than meat. Unlike meat, fish have more high levels of polysaturated fat and lower levels of saturated fat. Avoid to eat frozen food, fries, cookies and cakes. If you like this kind of food, do it yourself or buy from homemade healthy brands. I know this is a very contentious topic because most biggest companies in the uh, food industry earn billions from it. But this is science and has been published for decades and is one of the main reasons why processed food is so bad for us. If we could just remove sugar, refined flour, trans fat and partially hydrogenated oils from our diet, I believe that most of our health problems will disappear, even if we don't mess with uh, the rest of our food. Fructose is widely used as a sweetener under the name of corn syrup. Hiked fructose corn syrup, apple juice, and can be found in jellies, cookies, candies, syrups, juices, and soft drinks. Fructose exists naturally in fruit usually in small amounts, but the fruit is getting sweetener over time, as the industry knows it sells better. Apples are very rich in fructose and natural fruit juices generally have a large amount of it. Fructose can increase the levels of total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol. Avoid eating too much fructose. Orange juice has less fructose than apple juice, which can be a good solution. We can drink apple juice, but in moderated amounts. Avoid eating cookies, candies, uh, jams made with high fructose corn syrup. And keep in mind that major brands of soft drinks use it as a sweeter. Eating fiber-rich foods helps control cholesterol reabsorption in the intestine. 
lack of fiber in modern diet is creating serious health concerns, as it affects us in so many ways like, for example, cholesterol levels and the type of bacteria that grows in our bowel. The microflora of our bowel influence our immunity, brain function, skin health and much more. Replace white bread with wholemeal bread. Eat more nuts and seeds instead of cookies and cakes. In your main meal, eat more vegetables like carrots and broccoli instead of pasta and french fries. Oats and flaxseed are very high in fiber and are a very good choice for making crackers and cookies. Meat eaters tend to have higher levels of cholesterol, has high risk of heart disease than fish eaters and vegetarians. A Epic Oxford prospective study made in UK with a 18 years follow-up with more than 48,000 participants with no history of ischemic heart disease, stroke or angina show that fish eaters and vegetarians have lower rates of ischemic heart disease than meat eaters, although vegetarians have higher rates of hemorrhagic and total stroke. Yes, vegetarians have more risk of strokes. This is something already found in other studies and can be related to very low levels of LDL cholesterol in the case of hemorrhagic strokes and low levels of B12 and D vitamins, essential amino acids or omega-3 like APA and DHA in ischemic strokes. Replace some meat meals with fish meals or even better, do some vegetarian meals every week. If you are vegetarian, eat fish once a week. But if this goes against your beliefs, well, at least keep good levels of vitamin B12, vitamin D3, essential amino acids, and omega-3, especially DHA, with supplements. Garlic as onions reduce activity of the cholesterol producing enzyme like statins but in a much milder way. Consumed over time helps to keep cholesterol under control. And so many Indian spices, turmeric, reduce LDL cholesterol and increase HDL cholesterol, the good one. Ginger reduce LDL cholesterol and inhibits its oxidation. Parsley, coriander and basil decrease cholesterol. Virgin olive oil plays a protective role against heart disease by decreasing LDL heterogenicity and increasing HDL the protective cholesterol. Exercise has been shown to have positive impacts on cholesterol and cardiovascular health, helps to keep total cholesterol under control and increase HDL cholesterol. If you do all of this, but your cholesterol is still out of control, there might be one of the following reasons. The first one is vitamin C. We all suffer from chronic deficiency of vitamin C. There is masked by the ingestion of other substance. But in sensitive people, this can make the cholesterol to rise. In a meta-analysis of 13-1-3 randomized controlled trials, in English means a statistical analysis of 13 scientific studies, 500 mg of vitamin C daily for 4 weeks decrease LDL cholesterol, known as the bad cholesterol, but not HDL cholesterol, known as the good cholesterol. This was observed in a lot of studies. Every time vitamin C goes up, cholesterol goes down. The other reason is stress. If we live in uh, worry, anxiety, not getting enough sleep for several weeks or months, probably we have high levels of cholesterol. If you think this is the trait of your personality, then I should tell you that you live in chronic stress and it's normal that you have high levels of cholesterol and your doctor thinks there is genetics. Stress, stress uh, decreases 
the correct use of cholesterol because we need more cholesterol to produce cortisol and a type one type of uh, stress hormone in one study it was observed as well that in students in students cholesterol levels were higher in examination days so what should we do first ensure you're eating natural foods and not processed products at least try to reduce the amount of frozen and plasticized food follow my motto peel more and wrap less it never fails write on your kitchen wall in the car on your wallet wherever you want heat soup salad with olive oil herbs and garlic more fish and less meat increase your vitamin c fight stress making the brave decisions you're being avoiding and do sports every day or every other day make some little changes in your diet and lifestyle and live a more human life before blaming genes we have changed more our diet and lifestyle in the last 100 years than in the last 10,000 years it's not the genes that are wrong don't you think well digest all this information and adapt to yourself we are all different there isn't a plan to fit all and that's all folks see you in the next time